Hey, what's going on YT? It's your girl LB. And today I wanted to come to you with another movie review. And today we're gonna be talking about the movie The Night Before. Okay, let's get some of the facts out of the way. This movie was directed by Jonathan Levine and I looked up his IMDb and I didn't really see anything on there worth talking about. So we're gonna just keep it moving. I did find this interesting though. Evan Goldberg, who was a part of the screenplay, he was known for Superbad. So that kind of makes sense because it's supposed to be like a funny, crazy movie and Superbad was definitely at that time one of the funniest movies I had ever seen. And I watched Superbad on Christmas Day. Some of the comedy in the movie Super Bad, I couldn't even register. Like the my laughs were so delayed because I was like, is this really happening? But absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen Super Bad, come on now. Let's go ahead and talk about these actors and some of the top bill cast. We have Joseph Gordon Levitt, and he is known for Inception, um, The Dark Knight Rises, which is the Batman movie, I believe, Looper, and a whole bunch of other stuff. He's um, been around for a while and been in a lot of movies. Then we have Seth Rogen, who is known for Super Bad, and then we had Jillian Bell and Lizzie Kaplan. Now, the thing that got me about this is Anthony Mackie, who is known for so many movies. I'm talking about The Hurt Locker, Captain America, Million Dollar a baby real still and we he's just one of those black actors that we see in a lot of movies but why wasn't he on the top bill cast when he had so much airtime compared to some of those other people who really didn't even have that many lines in the movie i don't get it that that didn't make any sense to me he was in the movie a lot therefore i think he should have got paid a lot now let's talk about who plays who joseph gordon levette plays ethan seth plays isaac jillian plays betsy Lizzie plays Diana and Anthony plays Chris, okay? So the movie starts out at a funeral for Ethan's parents. They've died in some kind of tragic car accident and he's just become depressed over the situations. Well, his homies, who are Isaac and Chris, decide to come over to his house and cheer him up. So in that moment, they start some sort of Christmas tradition where they go out on Christmas Eve and they do all types of things. They go eat at a certain restaurant, they go to a certain toy store, they just have a ball for Christmas. So in the midst of having all this fun, they run into this group of people and they were like, oh my gosh, where did you guys come from? She was like, we were coming from the best party of our freaking lives. So they was like, oh, well, we trying to get down with that. But the thing about it is it's so exclusive that you have to get invited. You have to get tickets and all this stuff. So those hopes and dreams kind of went out the window. So anyway, time goes on and we kind of realize that Ethan is losing. His homie Isaac has a family and they're chilling and doing good. And his homie Chris is actually a professional athlete and he is a star. He's made it and he's doing the thing. And here we got Ethan working in some department store being an elf for the holiday season. You know, I know that I have dark circles under my eyes, but this light is just too good because it is really bringing it out. And that's crazy. But you know what? It's all good. Whatever. I'm still cute though. So while Ethan is working his just bummy jobs because he should be doing way better at his age, he's in the coat check and he's helping this girl in there. Well, somebody comes to check their coat and he looks in the pocket. Well, he didn't really look in the pocket because they were sticking out of the pocket. Anyway, he sees the tickets. He already knows what the tickets look like because the girl showed him the tickets from all those years ago. And it was three of them, go figure. So he goes to get the homies for their traditional the night before hangout. And you know, the homies are kind of feeling sad for him because they feel like he's still depressed about the passing of his parents and he also had a girl that he kind of dumped for no reason so they're kind of looking at him like he's losing too they go out and they do their thing they have their fun and kind of like midway into the night that's when he reveals that he has these tickets and then they just get totally turned up they are ready 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 to go to this party and that's where the movie takes off from there. We watch them as they try to get to this party and a whole bunch of things just go AWOL. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right off the bat, this movie was kind of whack to me. It was supposed to be really funny. If you think about the guy who did the screenplay, he was known for super bad. Every bit of super bad was funny. This movie was not like that. It has some parts in the comedy where it was kind of like dark and I didn't know if I was supposed to be laughing or not. Like for instance, Isaac winds up getting high and drunk and stuff because he's trying to do the ultimate turn up. And in the midst of that, he's freaking out and he's paranoid. And we know that his wife is pregnant. So he's kind of having second thoughts about this baby. So he gets on his phone and he does like this rant. And he's talking about he doesn't want the baby anymore. And he's going to kill the baby and put the baby in a bag and send the baby down the river. And it was funny the way he was saying it. But then when you think about a dead baby, that's not 
how funny. And kind of all the comedy points were like that because he did most of the funny stuff because Ethan was kind of depressed the entire movie and Chris is just not really like a funny type of dude. So like all the comedic aspects of the movie were left to Isaac, AKA Seth Rogen, and he just was not nailing it. I just think he tried to go too far. I think he tried to step outside of his comfort zone and he needed to get right back in that box. But with that being said, I may have laughed three times and this was supposed to be like a hilarious movie. And there were a few people in the movie theater with me and they were just sitting there just looking, just looking. So I guess that just goes right into my cons of something I didn't like. It wasn't funny enough. The next thing that I didn't like that it wasn't dramatic enough. This is supposed to be, uh, like I said, this is supposed to be like a movie that is the ultimate turn up before Christmas. And it was not that turned up. It actually seemed like it could have happened to any regular old Joe on the street. It's supposed to be something magical about these type of movies, the Night Before, Super Bad, The Hangover, you know, all these kind of crazy movies. It's supposed to be over the top and it wasn't over the top like this you're probably gonna be able to relate to this because this stuff probably happened to you before I'm gonna tell you the funniest person in this movie was actually Mr. Green who was played by Michael Shannon and he was their weed guy he had me laughing more than anybody can I think of another thing that I didn't like about this movie not really it was just kind of boring I had higher expectations than I should have had now, was there anything that I liked about this movie? With a little bit of digging, I found it. I liked the concept of the movie. You know, it's supposed to be this ultimate party with these three bros. They're supposed to go out for Christmas Eve and live it up to the max. But they didn't really live it up to the max. And you know what? Another thing I couldn't figure out is why Isaac was the only one that was tripping hard. I mean, granted, he's the one that had got the drugs, but usually when people get drugs in movies, they share with everybody else. It was just him eating the drugs. And I say eating because he was eating mushrooms, snorting cocaine, all kinds of crazy stuff. But nobody else was getting down with the party. That made it not funny come to think about. It. That's like you going to a bar with the homies and only one person is drinking. That's not fun. So let me just go ahead and get on to the rating. I give this movie two stars, okay? I didn't hate it. I liked it. It was all right. Was it worth going to the movie theater to see it? Definitely not. Would I go see it again? No. Would I watch it on TV? No. Would I recommend it? No. I really don't even know why the movie was rated R. Granted, it had some curse words in it, but it was just, it wasn't even that big a deal to be rated R. Now, would I let your kids go see it? No. No, children don't need to go see this. I mean, if you have a kid that is like, 17 years old 16 or 17 years old mm -mm. i don't know you know what i really don't think they need to be going to see this because there was a lot of because there was a lot of drug uses in the movie i would just say not to, well you know what i don't know because it could be a learning experience for some of those kids that are in high school because it definitely shows you the effects of what happens to you when you take mushrooms and you snort cocaine and it doesn't agree with you which drugs don't agree with anybody just say no but if you're looking for a good comedy to go watch this is not the movie for you i would not be rushing over to any movie theater to try to see this movie just go ahead and let this one go and imdb had the nerve to give it a 7.3 out of 10 you better go kill yourselves so anyway people that is my take on the night before i want to thank you guys for tuning in and until next time yt it's your girl lb peace